What's going on, YouTube? It's your boy Swisher coming back at you, you know what I'm saying, with my own texts and thoughts. Now, <clears throat> I've been having to dispute this, these facts with a few people on, you know, my, my Facebook and the other social media networks, you know. Is... Let's, let's just put it like this. They think that my idea of going out and actually seeing as how we just make the move for Brock, you know what I'm saying? We traded, we got rid of him and whatnot. The fact that Dontari, see, Dontari Poe and Dante Hightower are still out on the free agent market. This is the perfect opportunity for Houston right about now. Because think about it. Dontari Poe, you have an ascending player in DJ. I said DJ. Yeah, I'm tripping. DJ Reader, you know what I'm saying? Yes, that's true. But he's not Dontari Poe. And with that being said, He's, that's just, it is what it is. He's not done Tari Poe. From a power scale, you pair Don Tari Poe with J.J. Watt and, in my personal opinion, Jadavian Clowney, those three right there are going to be able to just generate a fierce pass rush. Then you, not to mention, you got Whitney Merciless. And a potential, and I'm really hoping that Houston finds a way to make it happen, T.J. Watt. <sighs> now, another guy that I would love to add to this defense, Dante Hightower. Now, again, they, was, they, they kept wanting to say, well, you, you still got to have enough to pay Romo. You think you really think Romo is gonna command a, a top dollar? I mean, don't get me wrong; he's worthy of it. But Tony Smart, come come to Houston, take a cap friendly deal. This way, we can go ahead. We can bring you in. Reconstruct whether it's because right about now I would go ahead and I would trade for him and I would give I would go ahead and send him a fifth from next from a fifth from this year and a fifth from next year. Get it out of the way, you know what I'm saying? You can restructure his deal once you get him here. Just gotta get him here. You know what I'm saying? Boom! It helps out. You get him on a cap friendly deal. It helps the team. You know what I'm saying? And the team also gets to save a lot of money. Now, with that money, you can, like I said, you go and you pay Dontari Poe and Dante Hightower. Now your front seven is solidified. It's solidified. I can, I would deal with Dante Hightower for three or four years over some of the players in this draft. And I'm just being honest about that because he's been there and he's done it. Personally, New England doesn't have two Super Bowl, the last two Super Bowl rings without him. Why not come for the ride? Get you one more. You know what I'm saying? It, 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 it makes perfect sense for both the free agents and Houston. Now, again, after that, like I said, if AP is really serious about winning a bit, winning a Super Bowl, you go, like I said, you go that Denver route and you go all in. Now, going towards, you know, the, I would say mm, probably after preseason, go ahead and you get, you use whatever you have left. And I'm, I'm more than positive that you can get hop at, you know, a five-year, 50 mil. Say 24 guarantee. I'm sure hop will sign that. 
knowing that you, he's going to play with Romo for probably two or three years, yeah, you get the you have an opportunity to become a champion, possibly back to back champion. Yeah, I'm I'm sure Hop will take that deal. Also, you know what I'm saying. Well, and the last the last guy, I would much rather you know. I know I, I mentioned him in my last video, but after you know reviewing the whole situation for what it is, and the guys that I want to bring in, and specifically for the role that they can play. And then when you find out, of course, that Brian's coming. Watch out, man. Um, you know, as receivers, you know, but in this league, the you guy, you know, know Sam Shield. Now, the only reason why it's iffy with Sam is because he's a number one corner. And I'm not going to lie, if it came down to it, if... If you could, if Houston could find a way, to, like I said, if they found a way to get rid of Brock, they can find a way to package J. Joe and Kush. You know what I'm saying? To potentially make room for these guys to come in and play, because that's the Super Bowl is every player's goal. And if you're a defensive player, why are you? Why would you? you why would you risk going to a team like you? Why do why pull an AJ Boy yet, basically? You go for the money, but at the end of the day, you got to contend with this team. I mean, like it or not, if we get, especially if, if we if we don't get. Tony, which I highly doubt it'll happen, you know, I'm pretty sure we will, but even if we don't, you still got to go through us, like it or not, and I don't, that's the one thing I didn't get with AJ, you know, you have an opportunity to be on a Super Bowl winning defense and you opted to the pay for the paycheck, now don't get me wrong, I get it, he's a man. He, he he has a, he has his family to feed. I I get it. I respect it. Get your dollars. But at the end of the day, you could have taken that twelve mil here and became a Super Bowl champion potentially. Because I I really I, I it's it's been a long time since I've actually been able to say if we really go out and like I said if we go and get. The players that I've mentioned, there's no doubt in my mind that Houston is a legitimate Super Bowl team. Like, for real. I, I have no doubt in my mind about it. Now, like I said, and it's crazy they mention it, AJ, now. You know, but, like I said, bringing in a guy like Tony, you know what I'm saying, he makes not only the team better, but think about it. He makes, he will make the receivers better. One receiver in particular that I'm looking forward to stepping up his level of play, Jalen Strong. In my personal opinion, Jalen Strong is an outside number two wide receiver in our system. You move Will Fuller on the inside and you let him go to work. You basically test that that nickel corner and see if he can keep up, if his quickness can keep up with Fuller's, which I highly doubt. As, like I said, going back to Jalen Strong, the, all the guy has done, he's he's the wide receiver version of Jonathan Grimes. I mean, and I know it's begin. I know it's been against the Colts, but. Whenever Houston needed that long play downfield, he he proved that he, you throw it up, I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna go get it. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm pretty sure that they drew it up that way and was predicating that you know they had the matchup that they wanted on the outside, you know, with Jalen Strong being a bigger receiver versus you know a smaller DB, you know. It's obvious who's going to win that battle if 
if the ball is thrown high and far and accurate, which Tony can do. Now, bringing in Wes Welker was going to help. Is was going to help all these guys and. Man, like I said, with guys like Jalen Strong, the athletic ability is there. The hands are there. If Houston could tap into that, his mental aspect of the game and his route running, oh, man. In our system, he'll be a number two, but he'll be making plays as a number one receiver. And... I'm not personally. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I wouldn't be upset with that. You know, not at all. You know, then when it comes time to resign him, he would have been a third round pick. You can resign him at a good price. Like I said, now with some of these, you know, now you have to, and this is more along the line of what Rick Smith has to do. You have to be willing to negotiate with these players and be like, look. We're bringing in these guys so that we can all be, become champions right now. Possibly back-to-back -back champions. You know what I'm saying? We're going to offer you these kind of, you know, we're going to offer you this deal. You can stay here and contribute to, you know, this championship era. Or you can go and opt out for the money. Again, when it comes down to it, you, I'm pretty sure if you ask any NFL player what they'll take, what they, which one, which would they rather be, a Super Bowl champion or a multi-millionaire? I'm positive most of them will say a Super Bowl champion. Ten times out of ten, they'll say Super Bowl champion. Why? Because champions are remembered. And guess what? Champions get endorsements. You think JJ's getting endorsements now? I'm all the way in Colorado, and they was just playing a commercial with him in with the HEB shit. You know what I'm saying? Like 30 minutes ago. That's out here in Colorado, and he's getting paid for that. Imagine if this man becomes a champion. He, he gets that ring. It don't, even, it, it don't even matter if he gets any more after that. If he gets that one, imagine he's already had a Hall of Fame career. That one ring is going to solidify that. You think Reggie White was a first ballot Hall of Famer? Who? Reggie, who, man, J.J. is going to, when he retires, he going to, that's going to first ballot Hall of Famer, no doubt. No doubt. Guess who else is going to be vault, who vaults himself into a first ballot Hall of Fame, if, you know, once he gets here? That man, Tony Romo. Like I said, if, if it don't matter if he, if he gets, I would, don't get me wrong, I would love for him to get two. Because that would rub it all in Jared Jones' face and make him have all kinds of sour grapes. And all Texans fans and even... Stephen A. Smith can laugh to the bank, even though he's not high on Tony Romo. He'll laugh at him. He'll just be able to laugh to the bank. <laughs> just at the fact that it wasn't the Cowgirls. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to my boy Ray Ray. Shout out to the boy LaFlame. Shout out to that boy L. Sticky Lair. Shout out to my boy Reed. As for usual, like, sub, and peace. And always, go Texans.